we're looking at the cohorts that we get on. Let us see. Good morning, Faith Missionary Church family and friends. We're excited about this Sunday's program. It's all Sunday's program. Um, we're going to get started. Um, we have an exciting day for you today. I know Pastor's ready to bring the word, so we're not going to prolong the program. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So now we are going to have our open selection by Sister Glenlene Sutton. Good morning. Good morning. You can't carry God. No. You just have to wait. You got to trust him, give him time. No matter how long it takes. So he's a God. You can't carry He'll be there, don't you worry. You know he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Oh, you can't hurt his God. Oh, no, no. You just got to wait. You have to trust him to give him time. God, no matter how long it takes. For oh, he's a God, you can't hurry, he'll be there, don't you worry. You know he may not come, he's on his way, he's right on time, he's right on time. Joe, we think so long, and feel the flesh fell from his tongue. His wife, scattered of his children. Everything he had was gone. Put these slicks in front of me. Come on, see about me. You know he ain't not coming. He won't be right on time. He's right on time. Oh, you can't carry God. Oh, no, no. He just got to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. So it don't matter how long it takes. For he's a God, you can hear me. He'll be there, don't you hear me. You know he ain't not coming. He won't do it right on time. He's right on time. Joe was sick so long until the flesh. His wife, his and children, and everything he had was gone. He put these slips in a funny. Lord, come on, see you about me. You know, he ain't got coming. He won't right on time. He's right on time. Oh, you can't carry God. Yeah. You can't hurry, God. You can't hurry. You can't hurry, God. You can't hurry. You can't hurry, God. You know he may not come anymore. Right on time. He's right on time. Amen. 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 He's right on time. At this time, we'll have scripture by Dignitas Geraldine Burke. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. <laughs> scripture this morning will come from Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth nor mercy nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, 
they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of ye heaven yet. The fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shall thou fall in the day and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, thou, that thou shall be no priest to me, seeing that thou forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And this morning, our focus verse will come from John 8, verse 32. And it reads, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. May God bless his already blessed word. Amen, amen, amen. Thanks, Sister Glenline and family for the song, and Sister Burt for the uh, scripture. Now, if you would, bow your head. Let's go to God in prayer. Help most wise, God. Once again, God, we're calling your holy, precious name. God, we thank you for all the grace, all the mercy you allowed upon us just for this day, Father God. Father God, it's a Sunday that we have never seen and a Sunday we will never see again, Father God. So, God, thank you for allowing us to get to this far, Father God, into our day, into this Sunday, Father God, because if we were... God, just to reminisce just for a little ways back, Father God, we can realize that just last night, Father God, you, God, you had your angels in camp around us, Father God, allowing us to lay down, Father God, and just rest all night, God. But, God, you didn't stop there, Father God. You had your angels just touch us this morning with a finger of love, Father God. God, you woke us up in our right mind, Father God. You woke us up, God, with a portion of our health and strength, Father God. Clothes to put on our back, God. Food on our table, God. And God, you didn't stop there, God. You gave us the mindset to get on Zoom for Sunday school, Zoom and Facebook for service, Father God. So God, we ask now, you touch God. Touch God, everyone on the sound of my voice. Bless God, everyone on the sound of my voice. Father God, touch the ones that wanted to get on and couldn't, Father God. Father God, we ask you to bless this nation, Father God. As we go through the pandemic, Father God, we still know, God, that you're in charge. Father God, give everybody a mindset to let the focus on you, Father God, to make a decision on wearing the mask or not wearing the mask. But God, we know that you have everything under control. Bless our pastor, God. Touch his heart. God, when he get ready to come forth, God, allow him to decrease, God, so you can increase in him, Father God. Father God, as we go through this world, we go through this world with you, Father God. Guide us, teach us, Father God. And God, we pray, God, we always pray that everything we do is suitable in your name. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, at this time, we are going to have our worship through offering given by Sister uh, Trustee Katie Hart. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's well this morning. By now, I hope everyone knows how to do their offering. Uh, let us pray. Most holy and everlasting thou art God, as once again we bow down and humble ourselves before you. That can use your God for another night of rest and for waking us up this morning. We pray, Heavenly Father, you bless these tithes and these offerings. Bless everyone that gives. Bless everyone that had the desire to give. And Heavenly Father, may no one suffer for what they give. And may it all be used in the uplifting of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank Trustee Katie Hawkins for that prayer. Thank you for your giving. God will always bless a cheerful giver. And at this time, we will have our music collection by our, our own Deacon Samuel Burwell. You're on mute, Sammy. I'm sorry. I was uh, 
On mute. I was I was on mute. <laughs> okay, let's start over. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my ways. You're the fire and light. When my nights are long and cold, in sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold, oh, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of my children, my family, and my home. You're the hope <coughs> and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, 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 Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. You're my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. You're my music, you're my song, you're my hope all day long. When I'm lonely, feeling sad, you're the lifter of my head. You're my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Amen. Certainly, we want to thank God for the opportunity to again come before his presence and even your presence and share in the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. I am Greg Hall, pastor of Faith Missionary Church to our church family. God uh, bless you uh, for joining us one more time. Today, God has led me uh, to the book of Hosea. Hosea is a prophet of God that God used mightily in a very uh, trying time in the history of Israel. 
Hosea was God's prophet and his ministry lasted over some 50 years. And it was with Hosea's life, not necessarily his preaching, that God spoke to his people as well as he is speaking to us today. Uh, Hosea was to Israel what uh, Jeremiah was to Judah. And that was a weeping prophet. One second, please. One second. There we go. A little technical uh, difficulty, but as I said before, Hosea was to Israel what, Ju what Jeremiah was to uh, Judah. With that being said, let me see. I'm going to ask if you could to mute your mics and your phones so that God can go out uh, unhindered. Thank you. In the Bible, our text of focus is Hosea chapter number four. And we'll be reading verses one through six. Again, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Hosea chapter four, verses one through six. You'll find words along this sort. Hear the word of the Lord, ye hath, he said, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowl of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for the people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Verse number six says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forsaken the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Our verse of focus is from the book of John, chapter number eight, verse 32. And it reads, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Pray with me if you would on the topic, living in truth living in truth. <clears throat> I want to show you today that what you don't know will hurt you. If you would pray with me, tell God our Father, we're so grateful and we're so uh, happy and joyful, God, that we have this opportunity to share. My prayer, God, is that nothing hinder this message from going forth. No technical difficulty, Father, no forces of evil, anything that's not like you, we ask God that you would rid it for these moments that are ahead of us, that this message might go out unhindered with the power and potency that your word warrants. Now, God, less of me and more of thee, and truly let what I say be the gospel of your son, Jesus. It is in his name that we pray, trust, and believe. Say with me, amen. Amen. We live in a day of lies. Have I got a witness? We are in America under the cloak of deception. Everywhere you turn, there's falsehood. 
people believe that what they believe somehow magically becomes truth. What we will see today that there is one truth and that truth is absolute and it is the word of God. That's the only truth that is foundational and that we are to live by. And the Bible says that we shall know the truth and it is the truth that will make us free. Hosea, in this text of focus, was God's prophet. And in the ministry of Hosea, God required of him to be married. Hosea, no problem. So he goes, and you would think that he would match him up with a godly woman because this woman is going to be the first lady of the prophet, Pastor Hosea. But instead of a godly woman, God tells him, commands him to marry a woman of ill repute. We don't hear that terminology too much uh, nowadays, but a, a woman of ill repute is a woman with a bad reputation. Have I got a witness out there? It's a woman that is from the streets. Now, it would be bad enough for God to require him to marry a prostitute, a woman who sells her body for something in return. But, but God says, no, you marry a whore. The difference between a whore and a prostitute is that a whore gives her body away for free. Have I got a witness out there? So God tells him to marry a woman from the streets. And as the text goes, he goes and finds a woman by the name of Gomer. Gomer is straight from the streets. Gomer is a whore in the worst explanation of what a whore is. Now, now this paints a picture of God's unveiling his love to his people and us, even though we are spiritual infidels. Whether we want to admit it or not, we are just like Gomer. Gomer had a bad reputation. And if the truth be known, from some of the things that we have done and some of the things that some of us are still doing, we are people of ill repute. Have I got a witness? But God in his infinite wisdom loves us anyway. Anybody out there glad to know that God loves us anyway? No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, I don't care how bad it is, God, loves us anyway. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Oh, that's, that's good to know. There ought to be some joy out there. And right in the middle of all of this going on is chapter number four, where God gives an epilogue of Israel's history and condition and even gives some indication of consequences for her actions. Now, as I read this, this text could be talking to America. Oh, let's bring it a bit further or closer to home. No, no, this text could be talking to Lewisburg, North Carolina, Franklinton, North Carolina. Have I got a witness out there? Just listen to how it opens up in verse one, chapter four of Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. That's talking to us also. For the Lord has a controversy or a charge or a problem, if you will, with the inhabitants of the land. Because, now, now notice the charge. Now this is the reason that God is saying, I got something against you. I got a charge that I'm bringing against you. First of all, he says, there's, there's no knowledge. I'm sorry. First he says, because there is no truth. Let me just... Let me just stop right there. There is no truth in the land. 
Have I got a witness? Lies are everywhere. Lies abound in social media. Lies. There was, one, there was once a time that we lived that we could trust the news. Mm. But let me tell you something. You can't even trust the news anymore. Lies are so prevalent. The reason that some of us are in the situation that we are in as a nation is because of deception. It was first revealed to us that this, uh, it was, oh, it's not going to be a pandemic. This COVID-19 isn't as bad as they say. That was a lie straight from the devil. And now look at the situation in which we're in. There was a lie that was put out that said masks don't do you any good. That was a, another lie that, that people lived their lives by. And now thousands upon hundreds of thousands of lives has been lost because it was based on deception, a lie, if you will. God says there's no truth in the land. People now believe that truth is whatever I believe. That's the truth for the day. Well, I got news for you. The truth has not changed and will it never change. The truth is founded on the word of God and the truth is the word of God. The word of God is absolute. And check this out, whether you choose to believe it or not, it will not change. That's what I love about truth. It does not change. There's, there's people now believe that they can live any kind of way they wanna live and they're gonna to get to heaven anyhow. That's a lie straight from hell's gate. Come on, somebody. You can't live any kind of way. You can't shack up and expect God to bless you. You cannot live the life of an infidel. You cannot live in a same-sex relationship, whoever you are. I'm talking to somebody out here. And now, because I speak the truth, they want to call us a bigot. Have I got a witness out there? Now, if you talk the truth, you're being unfair. You're being, uh, you're being too whatever. Let me tell you this. If you can say what you want to say, why can't I say what I want to say? And especially when what, I, when what I say is the truth. Everybody say now all roads lead to heaven. That's a lie straight from hell. Because Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. That's the only way and the only vehicle from earth to glory is through a man called Jesus. Have I got a witness out there? <clears throat> Hosea here is given a word from God. God is telling the people and us that there's no truth in the land and he's bringing charge against us. He says, there's no mercy. There was once a time when there was compassion. People aren't compassionate anymore. People don't care for one another anymore. There's no empathy now. People are just mean, they're vile. Have I got a witness out there? And, and the reason that all of this is because of that last charge, he says, because there's no knowledge of God in the land. Mm. And you can't have knowledge of someone that you have no relationship with. Have I got a, have I got a witness out there? I'm gonna say that again. You cannot have knowledge of someone whom you have no relationship with. If you don't know or have knowledge of God, then that's why your problems are the way they are. And I heard that in my spirit. I got relationship. Oh, do you? You have relationship with church, but I beg to differ if you got relationship with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why some of us are so uptight. We want to get back to 267 EF Carter Road in Lewisburg, North Carolina now because we had relationship with church, not God. <laughs> we had relationship with services. We had relationship with programs, 
But we didn't have a relationship with God because Moses was on the backside of a desert mountain and God told him, take off your shoes. Why? Because you're on holy ground. He won't in church. He won't in no sanctuary. He was on the backside of a dark desert place. But God showed up. What am I saying? I'm saying for this last past year, God has been showing up virtually. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We are so ready to get back to, to not, not, not to God. We're so ready to get back to having programs and having services. That's where our relationship was. And that's a sad commentary for the Christian. If you can't get happy in your house, mm, if you can't get happy in your room, my question is, do you have relationship with God? <laughs> Oh my God, my God. That's what that was, that was his charge. The, he says, there's no knowledge of me in the land. Verse two says, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Every time you turn on the TV, people are killing one another. We are killing one another as a nation. We're killing one another as a people. You know, I understand there's a, a great concern with law enforcement, but where's the concern about brother killing brother and sister killing sister? Come on, somebody. Mm. Until we learn love. This is a great call to not only revival, but this is a great call to repentance. Have I got a witness out there? He says, therefore shall the land mourn. Oh, yes. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field. Mm. Yeah, he says, and with the file of heaven, yeah, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. He says, yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for the people are as they that strive with the priest. No one wants to hear a message like this. No one wants to acknowledge that we really are living in a land of lies. The, the word of God says very, very plainly, who changed the truth of God into a lie? I, I, that's what I want to know. We, we, we can look outside and see the sun shining. Someone said, someone, someone will say the sun ain't shining. And, and there you go. That's a lie. But why will people choose to follow a lie instead of the truth? The lady that, that stood up in Congress by herself, a Republican, God bless her for her courage. Oh, there's so many cowards in Washington and not just in Washington. There's so many cowards that's behind platforms just like this that will not speak the truth because they're scared. I want you to know that this particular person is not scared of telling what the truth is. And the truth of the matter is that we live in a land of lies. Mm. Verse number six says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Let me just preach just for a moment about that. Notice that they're not destroyed because of lack of money. Notice that they are not destroyed because of a lack of being able to work or having jobs. Or Notice they are not destroyed by disease, but they're destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, what you don't know will hurt you. Have I got just one witness out there? I'm going to say that again. What you don't know will hurt you. God says, my people, by the mouth of Hosea, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What you don't know. I said, what you don't know will hurt you. He says, because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Isn't that interesting? It wasn't that the people didn't have access to truth. It wasn't that the people had truth held back from them. 
or they were privy to truth. They were privy to the knowledge, but they made a, de a decision, a choice. <laughs> the Bible says, because they have rejected, they have refused, even though it was available to them. We live in the age of information. <clears throat> you can Google anything, but just because you Google it and whatever comes up don't mean that that's truth. You got to use this brain God gave us. The Bible says, test the spirit by the spirit or try the spirit by the spirit. You can't believe everything you hear. You can't believe some things you see. Not nowadays. I say it again. We live in a land of lies. And he said we are destroyed because of what we don't know. And we have rejected knowledge. Oh, I heard that in my spirit. How have we rejected knowledge? It's not like the same question or a similar question that came from the book of Malachi. How have we robbed God? I'm so glad you asked. How have you rejected knowledge when it was offered to you? Some of you look at Bible study as a joke. Some of you look at Sunday school. Uh, that's not for me. Some of you look at missionary meeting. That, that's for somebody else. That's for them little old ladies. Come on, somebody. No, no, no. Truth is going out in Sunday school. Truth is going out in Bible study. Truth is going out in missionary meeting. God is making truth available. And then we wonder why we have problems in our relationships. That's because you reject the truth. It is in Bible study that I learn how to train up my child when they're young so that when they're old, they won't depart from it. It's in Bible study. It's in Sunday school where I understand about relationships and my responsibility as a husband, if I am one, and my responsibility if a wife, as a wife, if I am one. It is in such settings that God is speaking. But the people have rejected knowledge. Oh, it's, it's easier now than ever. All I have to do is come now. I don't even have to get all fancy it up and pretty it up. I can just turn on my, my computer or go to my phone and I can look at the word of God right there. But we have rejected it. We have refused knowledge. And the Bible says because we have refused knowledge, God says, I will re reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. And he says, I will forget your children. So what is the remedy? What is the remedy for a people called of God living in a nation, in a land of lies and deception? Our verse of focus points us to the truth that will not only give us wisdom, but it will set us free. In the book of John chapter eight, verse 32, it reads, and, and, and my text is in red. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. In the context of this word given by Jesus, the people were thinking that they knew what time it was just because of their heritage. They said, we're Abraham's seed. It doesn't matter where you come from. You can still base your, your life on a lie. It don't matter what lineage what family you're born into, you can still live life based on a lie. As I said before, people are under the deception that truth is relative. Whatever I believe for the day, if I believe that though I was born a male, if I want to believe that today I'm a female, that somehow or another that magically becomes true. But I'm here to burst your bubble. Just because you believe that you were one thing when you were born another thing, don't make you that thing. Oh, oh, I love that. Just because you believe 
Who died and made you God? Just because you believe, you know, though you were born one thing, you believe another thing. It don't make you that thing. Have I got a witness out there? And when are people going to grow a backbone? Oh, Lord have mercy. When are Christians going to grow a backbone? When is politicians going to grow a backbone and be able to stand up on their own two feet and call a lie a lie and a truth the truth? Or in the modern day vernacular when I was growing up, when are we going to begin to call a spade a spade, even from the pulpits of America, and call a lie what it is? A lie straight from the father of lies, Satan himself. Until we get the courage, the courage to speak the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And let's check this out. The truth will separate families. And that's all right, because as I said it before, I ain't going to hell for nobody. I ain't going to hell for my son, my daughter, my wife. I plan to make it into heaven when I die. And I, and I hope someone comes along with me with that understanding to know that just because we are in the same family, I ain't got to believe what you believe. Because what I believe is going to be the word of God. The word of God. God is truth. And truth is God. And if it ain't in the book, it's somebody else's opinion. And I choose not to believe opinion. For opinion can't put me anywhere. Have I got a witness out there? Jesus says, ye shall know the truth. Notice that is future tense. The truth is something that is not inherently known. The truth is something that's got to be sought after. Have I got a witness out there? You got to court the truth, which means you got to do some research. <laughs> you got to do some research to find out what is truth and what is fiction and what is, well, I don't even want to call it fiction. Now, what's a lie? There is no in between. Either it's true or it ain't. And I mean ain't. I didn't say isn't. I said it, either it's the truth or it ain't the truth. Either it's the truth or it's a lie. And, 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 and I don't care who you are, what family you come from, just because you decide in your own perception to believe a thing, don't make it true. I'm so glad that truth doesn't change. I just want to get, leave you with some, just a few attributes of truth. Truth never changes. Can we just let that seep in? Truth never changes. Time does not change truth just because uh, a thing has longevity. Truth will always remain the same no matter what the clock says. Mm. And what I love about truth also is that truth not only never changes, it never wavers. It's always the same. You can cover up truth. You can cover, my dad used to say, you know, truth can be covered up. There's a, there's a time period in which nobody may not even know what the truth is, but, but, but the winds of time has a way of unveiling truth. And truth, got my, my, my dad would say, truth will be standing just as straight as it ever was. So time can't change it. It can't make it waver. And what I love about truth is it is not hingent or dependent on who believes it or who doesn't. Just because I choose not to believe the truth doesn't change the truth. Let me give you a point, a point, uh, an example. Let me give you a fact that's what, what's true. There is a law called gravity. Stay with me just for a little while. I'm going to leave you with this. There's a law called gravity that I can choose to believe that law or I can choose not to believe it. It's, it's my choice. But I want you to know, but just because of what I believe it ain't going to change the truth of the law of gravity. I can say I believe the truth and have somewhat of a caution and a fear heights. <laughs> or I can say, you know what? Today, I'm going to believe that, there, that, that the law of gravity is a lie. Go up on a 30-story building, climb to the rooftop, and jump off if I'll choose to. That's my choice. 
But just because I choose not to, the consequences of my choice will be the same. The law of gravity will prevail. Have I got a witness out there? And I will fall to my doom. Have I got a witness out there? What am I saying? I'm saying don't fall to your doom believing a lie. Find out what truth is. Seek after it. Court it, if you will. You know, I can remember in my days of courtship when I went after my wife, I courted her for a while. Mm. I went after her for a while. I, I, I did some things different for a while because I had to court her in order to win her. Mm. Well, well, the reason we court truth is not to win truth over to our side, it's to win us over to the truth side. Have I got a witness out there? Hmm. Are you living in the midst of lies? and being truthful or have you resolved to throw up the flag of surrender and say whatever the truth for the day is i'm on board god wants some people that will not only stick to the truth but they will not sway the word of god says that we need to be people who are sure. Not like a man that is like the waves of the sea. Let that, that we turn and sway with every wind of doctrine. Even though we live in a land of lies, let's be people of truth. And just remember, what you don't know will hurt you. We bid you Godspeed. With that being said, we want to hold off the invitation to after this next service of Holy Communion. This is third Sunday and for Faith Missionary Church, third Sunday is the Sunday in which we take the Holy Sacrament. And we hope that you have your bread and your juice uh, ready. This is an ordinance that we participate in because Christ told us to. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we're to do this until Christ returns. He's coming back, y'all. He ascended, and as that angel said, the same one that ascended will also descend. We're looking for him to come back. We don't know when, we don't know where, but it is inevitable, and we're to live as though it might be today. But he said, as as often as you partake in Holy Communion, he said, do this in remembrance of me. We do it as a sign of uh, we are his people. We do it as a, as a sign that we're saying, we remember, we remember what Christ did for us. He died for us. The Bible says that one of the last acts that he demonstrated his love, not only for his disciples, but for us, he ate one last supper with them. The word says that he sent Peter and John, his most trusted disciples, into a city. And he told them, because they were on the outskirts of town, right before the Passover, big festival. He sent them into a city, a city and he told them, look, when you enter the city, look for a man bearing a pitcher of water. He's going to be in the middle of a street. Now, that would be a sign to them to follow that man into a house. And upon entering the house, to say to the owner, that the master, the teacher, has need to eat this Passover with his disciples before he suffers. The Bible says that they went and they found all, just like Jesus had said, even a large upper room furnished just for that specific purpose. Now, we know that after he had distributed the bread, he pointed out first his deceiver. And we know it was Judas. But he still ate with them. And that's amazing. And when he told them that one of them was going to deceive him, and they started looking around, is it I, is it I? He said, it's the one that's dipping in the dish with me. And can't you see, can't you visualize that picture? His hand, because they, 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 they were eating probably around the table, kind of reclining back. Can, can't you see his hand with the bread dipping in the dish, the, 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 the sauce or whatever they had to eat? 
and his hand and Judas's hand was there at the same time. He said, it's the one dipping in the dish with me. That's all he had to say. <laughs> Lord have mercy. After he had pointed out his deceiver and distributed the bread, he said, look, take, this is my body that is broken for you. Eat all of it. He said in like manner, he said, this is the cup, the cup of the new covenant. Drink, eat all of it. He said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God be established. We want to thank you for uh, worshiping with us today. And uh, we're going to uh, extend the Christian invitation to those of you who may not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. We would love to have you there at faith, but I want you to know that there's no church that can get you into heaven. Just because you have membership uh, on a, in, in a church doesn't mean that you're going to heaven. Christ is the only vehicle that can get you from earth to glory. Did you hear me? Hosea, to, in today's story, wanted Gomer to change. But how many know out there, you can take the the woman out of the street, but you can't take the street out of the woman. If I got a witness out there, or to put it in modern day vernacular, when we were going uh, in, into the sanctuary to worship, there was a whole lot of Christians found in church. Hmm. But how much church was found in the Christian? Come on, somebody. In other words, what, what, am, I, what am I saying? I'm, I'm saying that we don't go to church to get saved. We go to church because we are saved. It's a response of who we are. We're drawn to people just like us. Oh, that's a true saying, birds of a feather. <laughs> they normally flock together. So it is with the Christian. We are drawn to each other. Why? Because of this earthen, this, this treasure in this earthen vessel. God on the inside of us draws us to one another. It's in that drawing that we come together as a congregation of believers. There's a global church, but there's also a local church. And we admonish you to join a local assembly where you are. We would love to have you there at faith, but join a Bible teaching church that allows you not only to receive, but also to give. For everyone has been, in, has, has been given a giftedness of God. Go where you can utilize your gift for the glory and edification of his people. We're going to ask that you would pray this prayer if you're feeling a tug on the inside to give your life to Christ. Pray this prayer with me. My God and my Father, I'm a sinner saved by your grace. Come into my life now mightily and dwell on the inside of me in the person of the Holy Spirit. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he came, that he lived, that he died, and that he rose again the third day, just like the word says. And now he's on the right hand of God, making intercessory for me and all the believers. Now, live your life through mine. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we're going to believe that you got born again. And that you are in the fellowship of Christ and in the family of God. And with that being said, we will have a benediction at this time. If you would raise holy hands, if you're not ashamed. And now unto him that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above that we can ask or even think, according to the power that is working on the inside of us, we glory, majesty, henceforth now and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord acknowledge him by saying, amen. amen. We amen. bid you God speed. And with that being said, God bless you until next time. Stay safe, but remember that we are in a land of lies. Please live in the truth of God.